Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the app Metaverse and how you can use it to do augmented reality in your classroom. So we're going to be taking a look at the finished product first here in the app that I have uh, downloaded on my iPhone, as you can see right here. And we're going to look at the different questions I put in there, not go all the way through it, but then we are going to switch over and examine how it is all pieced together on the studio side of things. So if we open Metaverse app, I'm going to go ahead and search for third floor as I have created one already for a project between our uh, fifth and sixth grade students where they're going to escape from the third floor. So we'll go ahead and start it by pushing a play button here. Okay, and it's using augmented reality. So you walk around with your phone until you discover the character. And there it is. He pops up with a statement. We have a next button to move on to the next scene. So we go ahead and tap on that. All right, then I have my first question here. Tiffin, Ohio is named after the first governor of Ohio, Edward Tiffin, who founded the city of Tiffin. I'm going to enter in a text and to test it out, I just type in a bunch of gibberish, and here you can see it brings up an incorrect answer. We hit the button and go back, and now we will try to answer it again. After we click on a clue, here it takes us to a Wikipedia page, a URL that I added, because I want my students to have to do a little bit of research instead of just doing a simple Google response or Google search. And there we go, right in here, we see that it's Josiah Hedges. So we'll move ahead and we will type in ready to answer. And we'll put in Hedges. And here we see we got the correct answer. Now we move on to the next scene. And this is kind of a tricky question here. What is at the end of the rainbow? I'm going to put some riddles to test their brains out and their patience as well. And then I also go into a few questions on the rock cycle and figurative language, as well as explorers. I reached out to their teachers and wanted to do stuff that they are doing in class. All right, now I switched over to the computer to show you the setup behind uh, the metaverse AR experience that I put together showing you the escape from the third floor. So what we have is, I'm going to assume you can go ahead and go to the website, gometa.io. Here's what you're going to want. You go ahead and create an account there, and then you're going to set up a new experience. So what I have is a storyboard, really is what you're looking at. And I just have a whole bunch of different options inside here. So rather than going in depth and kind of showing everything that they're doing here during this experience. Uh, let's look at what we had put together for what I showed you really quick. So we start with the little character and change the character. All I have to do is click on him. They have a bunch of different ones that are already tagged for you to search through. You can scroll and look for some more. So find the one you want that fits what you're going with here. And then you can add a button. So I just hit this add action, I typed in the word next, and then once you have that, you're gonna have options here. So it took a little bit of time to kind of get rolling and understanding what I needed to put where in order to get this up and going. I have a few different options here. Um, so I just set it up with, okay, here's a new character scene where it's just going to have a character with a dialogue. That's what you saw popping up. So that's this here, same thing here. So I just changed the text that was on top and then you can kind of see if I drag this around, how the different lines are interweaving in between the different scenes here. So when I have an answer, I, I put in a couple different actions here. So here's a clue and I just have transition to scene. I use this little hand so that I can just tap on the scene I want it to go to. And then same thing once I was done. So this was taking me to the Wikipedia article that I just uh, copied and pasted the website URL right into there. So then it will bring them back to this question. They hit ready to answer. And this is going to bring them to a scene that is called text input scene. I haven't gotten too in depth with all these. Like I said, this is new to me so far. Um, I've really only used character, text input, web view scene, and a YouTube scene at this point. So 
after these, I've got my multiple buttons, and then I'm gonna select which one goes where. So my clue is going to transition them down to here, and then that's gonna bring them back to the question, which really I should change this so that it goes back to the original here. Okay, I want this. All right, it is transitioning back to here. You can see the arrow going back. All right, so who found the city Tiffin? Now this is where it gets a little creative and um, kind of makes it so you're a little secure, almost like a breakout session. We have these two boxes right here, which are going to be under add new and then string. So we have lowercase text, so that's gonna convert whatever they type in and make it all lowercase. And then the other one I had in was response contains. So I was looking if there was a certain string of text in there. So the answer to who found the city of Tiffin in, here in Ohio, um, I have it going, they type their answer in, switches to lowercase, then that's transitioning to response contains. So if I click on that, Josiah Hedges is the gentleman's name. So I set this up so it's going to be all lowercase, and that's what the lowercase text is going to do. That's going to allow it. So if they put in a capital letter on Hedges, it brings it to lowercase, so it's all matching. Um, it's also going to allow for Josiah Hedges because Josiah Hedges contains that string. Unfortunately, this isn't the most secure because if they spelled his name wrong and made it like Joseph Hedges, that would still count as well. So like I said, this is early, I'm still learning it. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a way to do that. So after the string, we then have on response contains. If they get it correct, it's gonna move them on to the next scene. If they get it incorrect right down here, it's going to transition them to the one where it's incorrect. So then after they get the stop sign incorrect try again, that's bring them all the way back to the beginning of the question. All right, so I have a lot of that same thing going on here. And the next time we get to something a little bit different is going to be over in here where we're looking at different types of rocks. So I, I tried to throw in little jokes and stuff as I could. So here I wanted to make a multiple choice. So instead of them having to type in an answer, I gave them three different choices to go from. And two of them are incorrect. And as you can see, these two go down to the dog saying that they got it wrong and then bringing it back. And then the correct answer brings them to this next scene, which goes on to the next one. So same thing, we're going through some more stuff. I added in a few hints on some of them. And this one, this one I really took off of their uh, YouTube tutorial. In fact, it's pretty much the exact same questions. I use the same clues that Metaverse had on their YouTube channel. And here is an example of doing the YouTube. So the answer to this question is onomatopoeia. So I have figure of speech, meow, ding dong. But then I took a YouTube video that had some of those classic old school Batman live action with Adam West where it would do bam, pow, that type of stuff. So I thought that'd be a neat little clue. So if they get an incorrect answer, that's gonna take them here as another clue and then bring them back to the original question. And then to end it, what I ended up doing was making a string of questions where they had to get every question right in order to move on and finish the game. So here we go into the first question. If they get it correct, moves on. You can see the string of the correct answers going here. Now the incorrect answers are all coming back. No matter which question it is, if they get an incorrect answer, it takes them to this scene saying incorrect, start the final challenge over, which takes them all the way back to the first question in the final challenge. So if you get these three right, but the this one wrong, well too bad, you're going back to the beginning. So then I finished off with, you can add in, there's some like this camera scene where they can take a selfie and add it to it. Um, I didn't feel really comfortable doing that, not knowing how the uh, public, the pictures are and everything. So for now, I just did, hey, congratulations, you did it. Take a screenshot and show it to one of your teachers. So that's my quick rundown on Metaverse. I'm really excited at the potential here with this program. Uh, it takes a little bit of time. I've got I've got quite a few minutes into building this one here. I kind of went big on my first try, but I tell you what, if you have the opportunity, especially with you know, 
breaks coming up and stuff like that, you could put something really neat together for your students. And uh, it's a way for them to, to demonstrate they know or they can go out and find research. I tried to make it so the questions couldn't just be answered simply with a Google search. I don't know if I was perfect with that, uh, but the idea is they're going to be in small groups um, and they, one iPad is going to open up the app and go to this challenge while the other students are going to have their iPads as well to go and do research. And then hopefully they go and do a screenshot at the end and maybe they might uh, take a picture of themselves. Maybe we'll let the team that comes in first have their picture um, shown for everyone else as being champions. So I hope you find this beneficial. And I think, like I said, there's a lot of potential with using this. Have a great day.